Hi everybody! Springtime in Perth. It's a nearly perfect time to visit. We just got back and the girls say they want to go back straight away and I actually really want to as well. Here are some recommendations for family friendly things to do while you're in Perth. The first is whale watching. This is the time of year where humpback whales do a migration and if you're really lucky you can see blue whales as well. We went with Rotnest Fast Ferries. The whales have their babies in the waters of northern Australia and then between September to November they make their way south to Antarctica. And so you can see a lot of mother and calf pairs. It's really incredible to hear the sound that they make when, when they're inhaling like <gasps> and I, this is the kind of visceral thing that, that when you see wildlife in person, you know, you, you can never learn this kind of thing from a documentary. Plan to go on your whale watching cruise early in your trip because they offer a 100% whale sighting guarantee. If you don't see any whales on your trip, you can go again on another cruise for free. Spring is also when the Perth Royal Show is held, usually end of September or early October for about a week. And it's a traditional agricultural show, so you get to see all the farm animals and you got to pet some really cute ones. But also there's all kinds of mad things like, like camel rides and, and the, the globe of death with motorcycles and, and chicken races. We really just scratched the surface. There was so much to do and you can spend days there. Um, there are fairground rides. The, the dog shows, it's really incredible. Perth's awesome festival, which is about creative learning and, and arts exposure for kids, is also held in spring. And we managed to go and see the Western Australia Symphony Orchestra's fairy tale ball this year. It really was a ball. A lot of kids dressed up in costumes. The musicians also dressed up in costumes. There was a conducting workshop and you know, the music was just transporting. The next few attractions you can visit any time of the year, although Kings Park does have a wildflower festival in spring with guided walks and other activities. We just went, it was very good for unstructured play in the water features. They have some epic playgrounds. We also went to the Lottery West Federation walkway, which has great views of the city skyline. Rottnest Island is my number one thing to do in Perth. Rottnest Island is the only place in the world where you can see quokkas, and they're actually like a kind of small wallaby. You are basically guaranteed uh, quokka sightings. They are in abundance here. Don't worry, you don't have to work hard to find them. They are all over the main street. In fact, we cycled all around the island and we didn't see any quokkas in the wilder places. The island is gorgeous with beaches, lighthouses, lakes. It's great to bring your bike or, or rent a bike on the island. This has been an absolutely perfect morning. Great weather, so beautiful. But if you're not a really accomplished cyclist, you may want to consider getting the e-bike because it's quite a lot of uphills and you will need to get off and push. It's so idyllic that you could just book some accommodation and stay there. To see quokkas and other Australian wildlife, Cavisham Wildlife Park is a really good bet because they let you get really up close and, and actually touch many of the animals. Many of Australia's most famous residents are endemic, meaning they are found nowhere else in the world. That was a kookaburra. We also saw quolls, possums, Tasmanian devils, betongs. At Cavisham, you can feed kangaroos pretty safely because the more aggressive ones are kept in a separate pen. It's also possible to hug a koala for an extra fee but you have to be at least 130 centimeters tall. We even heard dingoes howling, which was pretty cool. It made a big impression on the kids. <coughs> and we ended our trip with a bang. Fremantle Roundhouse is the only place in Australia and possibly the world where a member of the public, like non-military, can fire a cannon. Like even a kid can do it. 
You can just email them to arrange it. It's completely free. The cannon is fired daily at 1 p.m. weather permitting. Whoa! And after you fire the cannon, then you get a certificate saying that you're an honorary gunner. And Emmanuel was like really, really pleased about that. All the links for the attractions in this video will be found in the description below. If you like this, please do subscribe. I will hopefully be posting more videos on where to eat in Perth. Um, yep, yeah, see you next time. Bye!